Making movies in this world is something that people often dream about. It's something they often think about. It's something that they really want to do in life. Sometimes people have great stories in their lives that are really worth telling. They write novels. They write screenplays. They write scripts. They write plays. They write books. They tell their stories, and at some point, someone likes the film enough, likes the book enough, likes the idea enough that they turn it into a film. Then it usually goes through a myriad of people who decide whether or not they like part, bits and pieces of that script. They determine whether or not it's worthwhile, they determine how to make it make money, and they decide what they should keep and what they should throw out and what they should alter in creative license. The trouble with that is that the truth gets lost. In life, we have people who are reporters who tell the truth. They tell the truth about what's really going on in this world. They tell the truth about how people are interacting with others. And they actually capture people doing things a little bit odd. We have plenty of journalists online. We have plenty of journalists on television. The challenge today with journalism is that it's almost impossible to reach a journalist by telephone, by cell phone, or even email today. Most everything is sort of in an automated mode that they are literally sending their reports in from now home offices and flying places and doing things and there really doesn't even seem to be a major office anymore for newspapers or other types of places. It's a capital expense perhaps they've gotten rid of or they moved into a countryside where the land is a little cheaper and they can have a lot more parking and there's not necessarily a, a newspaper for a major city downtown. Now in some cities there are but they usually are only run by a handful of staff and the reporters are literally living out in the communities. They're paid an hourly wage for their work and that's how we've produced news. The only question is, are these people's stories credible? And that's an interesting concept, that how do we determine with what we see in our computers when we go to search for something is actually factual? How do we know that what's on the internet is absolutely truth? And how do we know that someone has just produced something to get exposure for themselves? It's kind of like the Anne Hess thing when she was interested in Ellen. I mean, let's face it, that was a weird situation when she was apparently mumbling and bumbling around someone's home. I can't say that I understood that a lot, but I know that it was reported and then it disappeared. And let's face it, we haven't seen her much on television or in anything since, but I'm not someone who consumes TV a lot, so I don't know. And I'm sort of making a laugh track in a way because in life we have people who really love us, who really care for us, who really look after our souls and keep us protected. And then there are the monsters in this world who pretend to care for us, who say they care for us, but then they do things illegally, immorally, illicitly behind our back. They do it with the help of professionals, with the help of physicians, with the help of police officers, and they literally mob a person to death. Now I've talked a lot about mobbing in the last few weeks because I literally see it occurring. I see people's lives being taken from them in a way that the religious right thinks is appropriate, but it's not their right. And that's something I'd like to talk about in a little different way. You see, when we're talking about people who, has, who have certain issues, we're not really thinking about whether it's our right to comment or not. And isn't that a fundamental trait within the Bible that says, thou shall not judge or thou shall be judged? And openly, that is what still happens in this world. We literally have lost the ability to forgive people. We've also lost the ability to forgive people who destroy our rights. And that is a different story. You see, it's one thing to forgive someone for making a misstep, for making a bad comment, for telling us the truth in a situation of rebuke when we really need to hear it. But it's another thing entirely when people band together and start to mob someone and destroy their little right to movement, freedom of speech, freedom of opportunities, freedom of medical care, freedom of opportunities to say, no, I'm sorry, that's not truthful. And that's where the slippery slope is. It's also where the slippery slope begins, and it's not where the slippery slope ends, unfortunately. You see, we are facing many problems in our nation. Most of them are not politically driven. They are politically driven because they're talked about lively enough by politicians who are trying to control the country. But the reality is the control of the nation is in the hands of its people. Every single minute of the day, every single moment of the day, we make a decision. We make a decision how we're going to lead our life, how we're going to be in this world, and whether or not we're going to tolerate certain behaviors or not. Now let's talk about tolerance. Tolerance means I'm going to allow someone to be who they are without it impressing me or impacting my life in any way, shape, or form. I'm not going to go off on their little stints. I'm not going to talk about them culturally or ethnically. I'm not going to make cultural generalizations that I might observe from my lifetime of experience with them. 
is not the same as reporting. You see, reporting live means I'm literally in the midst of a situation, I'm looking it over, I'm observing it as a fair fact-finding mission-oriented approach, and I'm simply saying these are the three sides to the story. This side thinks this, the other side thinks that, and a happy ground, peacekeeping middle ground might actually be this. Now that's what we were trained in journalism school to do. We were trained literally to find the truth between the observations and opinions of the sides. The problem is that when it comes to a person's individual rights, there is no opinion here. The opinion belongs solely to the individual. The opportunities belong solely to that individual. And the people reporting on that life need to really get that in their minds. That when they're gossiping and when they're coming forward with their opinions about someone's life and from an outside perspective they are not actually literally living within that human being's mind heart or soul they're not there in their every single minute of the day life to say what a person does or doesn't do literally with their time management or with their productivity in performance in an employment setting or job and they can't really say how well someone performs on a day-to-day -day basis over the course of time or many years of time in relationship to someone else. You see, that's the interesting trait that we've got to get into our minds, that when we're reporting about someone's life to other people, we are in fact gossiping. We are sharing information that may or may not be ours to disclose. At the same time, we are performing a job function in some situations that is literally not solely our responsibility. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean that there are people employed in the community by corporations and when they sit there in those positions they're representing those corporations and those corporations presidents now think about the liabilities of that when we don't train our children in the proper rules of the law of the United States in terms of our nation internationally we look foolish to the rest of the world you see other nations know their rights and their rules in their countries they also know how they interact with the rest of the world and what those rights and literal obligations are. The United States is so large and vast that we don't always talk about those things on a regular basis. We don't say what we're doing in China all the time. We don't literally have liaisons who give reports on a daily basis of what they're doing on behalf of our entire nation. Maybe that's a problem. Maybe that's where corruption comes in. But what we do have is a border war problem that is getting worse by the mile. Now why is it getting worse? partially because the immigration law is completely outdated, is not based on merit, it's not based on relationship to Americans, and that's a problem to some degree. We've literally had couples who had had to live apart from one nation to the next because they were not lawfully allowed to enter the nation after an American citizen chose a foreign partner. Now, isn't that a sadness? Some of that's because of the foreign trade of green cards in a way, but others of it is because the national laws did not change with the influx of the infidels and others who've been here to destroy our life and our way of thinking. You see, proudly, we are American citizens. We are born with this right and freedom of religion, freedom of speech, freedom of movement, freedom of mobility, freedom of practically every aspect of our literal life. The problem is that not everyone remembers the laws of America, the U.S. Constitution. Now, it has been my proposal that people should have to literally watch our U.S. laws in a five or ten minute video as they're coming on the plane. That everything else is silent, that all their cell phones are silenced by the captain on the actual airplane, and they're forced to watch to know what our rules and regulations are in our land. They're also told that if they monkey up, their rights that they will be sent home to be punished in their home countries that might change the behavior of a lot of people because some people think our systems are too lenient where they get a free bed which is not comfortable and a meal which is not really healthy for every human being's cellular system you see everybody's cellular system is unique and different when i buy a meal somewhere i'm purchasing it based on one of two things either i'm hearing that i need to eat this sort of food to balance out the headaches that I might be having, or I'm simply feeling a craving for that type of food. Now, we also have to stay against our cravings so that we don't plump up and get out of control in our cellular health and our bodies and how we feel and how we weigh and what happens to our feet and our legs if we're too overweight. Now, that's just a man talking logically. 
When I talk practically as a reporter, people get upset because I'm telling the truth that in our technology we have people who are monitoring what we say, what we type, what we text all the time. We have police who don't have to follow any rules or regulations whatsoever with regard to our local rights, and that doesn't seem correct based on federal law that protects our telecommunications from spying and espionage and other things. It literally does not define us correctly in a way that's appropriate if we are literally seeing that social engineering is being utilized to pretend to be us in conversations to talk at other people or if someone in a technology company is literally just saying we're just going to cut off this person from all their technology capabilities whatsoever now think about that a technician somewhere just says i'm just going to shut off this person's telephone i'm going to make sure none of the phone calls get through i'm going to make sure that this voicemail doesn't work i'm going to take away all these email capabilities now what literally happens to that small corporation is pretty obvious. They lose all their opportunities in life. They lose their opportunity to create a revenue. They learn the lose the opportunity to have income for families that need to be fed, and they openly might lose their house. Now that's what happens in the world. We literally have people who are that vile in their souls, thinking they have the right to cut others off from people, places, opportunities, technology, communications, religion, spirituality, physicality, emotionalism, whatever, intimacy for that matter. Now when I talk like this, what do I sound like? A politician perhaps? A reporter for sure, but in reality what I'm saying to you is pay attention to your life. You see, in life we have relationships all around us. We have people in restaurants that are total strangers to us that we can bump into and make a conversation with. We have people in our synagogues and churches and organizations that really could help us if they got off their ass to do it. But most of the time what happens is a pastor looks at liability, legalities. He might actually call a police officer before he actually gets in a conversation to find out what's really going on with someone. Now how vain is that? That's a real problem already in front of God in the house of the Lord. But where is our care and concern for the human rights of people internationally. You see, there's tons of international rules that apply to third world countries most of the time in our minds, but we don't always apply them to our life here in America. People take away rights from others all the time that would be violations of international human rights law if we were put in a tribunal that way. Our foreign p friends who come over here don't think about international rights because they're not told to think about it when they arrive. They're not presented with the Constitution of the United States. They're not told that thou shall not steal when they're here. They're not given any understanding of what prison life is like. They're not educated in our systems. That's a problem. We literally do have people here who are here illegally, who are working in companies handling our food, and we have to be concerned about when we find granules of things in a beverage that shouldn't be in there at all. It means that when we weren't looking, someone slipped something in there that could be a Mickey, that could render us unconscious, that could allow them to get into our purses, our, our packages, our paperwork, our suitcases, our clothing. And that's a real issue. We also have people who are in the federal government who do crap like this to take advantage of other people, to put them in an imposition, to make sure their lives go poorly. That's a problem too. You see, we have freedom of a lot of things in America that other countries are devaluing in their own but when we ourselves devalue those little aspects of life then we totally have flown in the face of all the men women and children who have literally died for our nation protecting our borders protecting our rights as american citizens protecting the president of the united states for that matter and frankly we have to really look at that carefully that when we start to believe that our rights extend into someone else's life, that we have the right to modify their plan for their life, that we have the right to steal them blind. And in my case, I had a loving photograph of myself and my spouse of many years seated on our fireplace in a community where we lived in front of something that was a family heirloom for my family. Someone got into my sister's home, got into my bag, and cut that off literally took the photograph of me and my significant other and cut off and left a photograph of some piece of material object that I was literally gifted against my wishes at the time, but I have valued most of my life and decided to leave to my family because it has a value abroad more than it does here. But someone might have pilfered that already for my storage unit, just like my other religious things. Now what gave them the right to do that? Absolutely nothing. 
And if I'd been put in some sort of a game situation, then how would you know whether or not your name's in a game? The Matrix film that we all have given a lot of clout over the years with Ken Overees openly talked about this concept of how people's lives were sort of being micromanaged in a way. That whoever wanted to get ahead could only do so if they lied, stole, and cheated, or brutalized their way out. Others were sages, gave them advice, gave them help, but they may not get everywhere either. You see, technology is now being utilized to control us. Streets that are now two-lane only are controlling the flow of traffic. Roundabouts are forcing people to give the right away, but only if people understand how they work. And the reality is, if God forbid, if one of these cars breaks down on a two-lane road, what happens to traffic? It virtually stops to a standstill. There's no more shoulders in this American countryside, and there certainly isn't in suburbia. There's no shoulder on these back roads by farmlands that have been put in to get into the back ways to malls, and that's a problem. There's no sidewalks, and in winter, they shovel off the, the drives, they make sure parking places are clear, but for those of us who are walking for the handicapped in wheelchairs, they don't shovel the sidewalks, and that's a problem, so we have to walk in the little street. Now, when I'm talking about this, does this make sense to you? Or have you never gotten out of your car and walked anywhere in life because you're too lazy or because the time doesn't allow it or because time management is poor or because you've just not really thought about what life might be like for a person who doesn't have an automobile in life? You see, the only way to understand another person's life is to put yourself in their shoes. And only when you put yourself in someone else's shoes can you possibly understand what another person's life is like. But here's the reality. When it comes to our personhood, when it comes to our paperwork, when it comes to our property, they literally all belong to the individual themselves. No conglomerate, no organization, no policeman, no other person has the right to take those things from us, no matter what the legality is. I had to sign a contract recently that said that if a law came off, then they would just do whatever the hell they wanted with my property, and that allows them a violation. I didn't like signing it. I thought it was illegal. I thought it was immoral for sure. But I'm telling you the truth, that people do lie and steal and cheat people out of their rightful ownership of the things that belong to them. And that is not right. So when I talk like this, I'm trying to promote in America a new concept of the law. That the law is here to protect our rights from those infidels and others who are liars, stealers, and cheaters of our life's goods. You see, a good life is about the people in our life, the property that we own, and the paperwork that protect our finances, our retirement funds, and the other aspects of our lives, such as medical care and other things. And when people monkey in those things, when they change our records because of a game they want to play, they destroy the fabric of America. And those people are traitors to American life. We have to really put the word traitor in the right place. Traitor means you have traded something illegally, immorally, illicitly for someone else's rights. And that's what we have to talk about more and more as the political scene continues to be a viable place to discuss important issues of the day. But the reality is that a person's life, a person's property, a person's paperwork belong only to that individual. And no other person anywhere at any time has a right to take that from them. But we do have people who try. We literally have judges who think they have the right to do it. They don't, underneath international human rights law. We have police officers that immobilize people's abilities to go places because they go in ahead of them. They predict where they're going, and they go in and they talk to employees, and they get the employees to do illegal, immoral, and illicit things on that individual just to make it impossible for that person to go forward in life. Now, when I say this, I'm sure I piss off a handful of good police officers, but there's another handful that it represents that is absolutely truthful. And what gives a person the right to steal someone's property from a locked bin, a locked house, or a locked car? You see, we have people here from other foreign lands and people who are born here who never learned the truth about the law. And that is the fault of our educational system. It's the fault of parents, for sure. And it's the fault of overindulgence of children who didn't learn where their rights started and stopped because someone who was an adult didn't share it with them, didn't teach them, literally didn't tell them what the land is made here for, is to protect our lives with food, water, and other aspects of life that we need on the planet. Places like China don't have fresh anything anymore. Their air is so polluted because nobody thought about their environment or cared enough to protect their lungs from the problem of technologies. 
But in America, we still have a chance. We still have a chance to do things correctly. We still practically have the chance to make sure that people are honored in their lives. And we have the chance to say that an individual has the absolute human right to decide who they're going to lay with, who they're going to associate with, who they're going to be friends with, who they're going to do things with, but only based on one simple guideline. They must have talk, conversation with the individual directly. No lying about who you talk to, no putting reports down if you didn't really do it, and that's the reality. That the liars of the land destroy lives. That is the truth. The liars who manipulate, steal, and rob people of their rightful plans that the Lord has made for them should go to prison, federal prison perhaps, because it's federal law they violate. Now when I talk like this, I talk like a politician, I talk a bit like a reporter, I talk like a spiritualist, I talk like a pastor, but what I'm saying literally to you all is that when it comes time to help someone in life, you have that moment to make the decision. You can decide that you can wait it out, you can play it out, you can see how obnoxious they're going to get in their request, but that's not really godly at all. You see, when we ask God for something, he usually delivers. The problem is that the person who's supposed to deliver may not always get the message straight because they're not in the house of the Lord. They're not thinking about what would Jesus do in this moment or what would Muhammad do in this moment or what would literally the Dalai Lama or whoever they believe in is spiritual as a leader to their life for their philosophy on how they conduct themselves in this world. They didn't ask that question, what would so-and-so do? And that promotes the problems we have in the land. Now, in life, we have moments of time to help someone. I've been promoting an audio cast. If you like it, like my stuff. If you don't, tell me why you don't like it so that I can improve. If you've got an opportunity for me to be on the radio, I would love that. I'd like to interview people. I'd like to talk to authors. I'd like to do a lot more. But in life, we only have moments of time to grab someone's attention. And I've promoted myself. I've advertised myself. I've talked about my book. I've talked about my work. But right now, I'm promoting a film. And that film is going to talk about the honor of being an American, the actual practicality of how to do that, the educational resources we need to literally make that happen correctly for people, and beyond all, it's going to help to provide the homeless with real opportunities in life. Thanks for listening. This is Blake Henson of Blaze Communications, LLC. The magic and mayhem of the Lord might be my audio show, but the truth is, human rights is everyone's opportunity.